everyone, this is a video for uh, the children of dolphins class, tigers class and polar bears class. Now, my name is Mrs Thompson and Mr Thompson in uh, dolphins class told me that you guys were learning about World War Two, and I got really excited because I am a teacher too and in my class we've just learned all about World War II and it was one of my absolute favourite topics so I wanted to come on and do a little video for you guys to tell you um, all about the beginning of World War II and how it all started. I know that you guys have been asked to learn all about the beginning of World War II and to show your teachers what you have learned by looking at some videos and reading some things on the internet and um, one of the ways that you can show your teacher what you have learned you can use powerpoint you can do a piece of writing you can make a comic strip um, or if you would like you can have a little look at my channel and there are some videos on there on how you can make a book um, using paper and various things that you might have at home. If you look in a history book or on the internet or if you Google it, you will find out that World War II started with Germany invading Poland in 1939. And this is kind of true, but there are lots of historians, lots of people who study history, who think that actually World War II was always going to happen. It was always going to start way before that. So before I get into the Second World War properly, I'm going to rewind a little bit and I'm going to go all the way back to World War One. And World War One was between 1914 and 1918. This is a map of Europe, but it doesn't look like Europe looks today. The countries are all a bit different. Now, in 1914, the world, Europe was a very tense place. There were lots of countries with lots of leaders who all wanted to be the boss. They all wanted to have the biggest country and the most powerful army. And there were lots of little arguments going on. You've probably heard of a country called Austria. And you've probably also heard of a country called Hungary. But back then, before World War I, Austria and Hungary were one country and it was called the, well it was called Austria-Hungary, but people have also called it the Austria-Hungarian Empire. Now, there was a man who was about to become in charge of Austria-Hungary and his name was Archduke Franz Ferdinand. This is a picture of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. He was a big deal. He was an important guy. And he went on a visit to a place called Sarajevo. So he's an important guy. He's traveling around Sarajevo in his car. He's got his wife, Sophie, 
with him in the car and they're going around in the car and they're waving at all the people and they're putting on a bit of a show to show how big and important they are when all of a sudden disaster strikes there was a group of people who didn't really like Archduke Franz Ferdinand they didn't really like Austria Hungary they thought they were a bit rubbish and they decided to assassinate that's a long word it means kill basically they decided that they were going to attack Franz Ferdinand and kill him so poor old Franz Ferdinand didn't make it out of Sarajevo alive now this made a lot of people very very cross a lot of governments from all over Europe got really cross and said you know what you can't go around shooting people and when someone important gets attacked there are lots of people that have lots of arguments and it all it all kicked off basically everybody started fighting and that is kind of how World War One began really. So on one side you've got the Triple Alliance, that's Germany, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria and on the other side you've got the Triple Entente. Entente is a funny word, it comes from French and it's spelt like this. So, so that is how World War One started. Franz Ferdinand got shot and everybody argued about it and then lots of countries got involved and they were all fighting. Now World War I carried on for um, four years so it started in 1914 and it went all the way until 1918 and World War I ended on the 11th of November 1918 but it was really really tricky to get the war to end because everybody was still cross with each other everyone was still fighting there were still soldiers who were you know really in lots of trouble and in very very dangerous places all over Europe so it was really really horrible scary time for those people now what they did was they asked all the leaders of different countries to come together and to sit together and talk about how they could stop the war and how they could stop all these soldiers dying. And what they decided was that we can end this war. Germany actually said, do you know what? We want this war to be over. We're sick of war. We hate it. We hate all our soldiers dying. But the deal was Germany had to sign a special bit of paper and basically say, yeah, it was all our fault. They had to own up to something. Now, in reality, it wasn't really all Germany's fault, but they wanted the war to be over so badly that they were willing to do almost anything. Now, Germany had to sign this agreement and admit that everything was their fault, but they needed to do it because they wanted the war to be over. And in this agreement, there were several things that Germany had to do to make up for the fact that World War I was all their fault. They had to promise that they would not have an army anymore. They also had to give up lots of land they had to give it away to certain people um, now this annoyed them quite a lot and they also had to pay lots of money to the other countries who were in world war one because they had lots of things that they needed to fix the world had been at war for four years lots of things had been destroyed um, and lots of people had lost their lives so they had to pay lots and lots of money to other countries to make up for what they had done so for a long time after world war one the people of germany felt pretty rubbish they had no money because they had to give it all away to make up for the things that they had apparently done in World War One, and they 
had no jobs lots of people had no jobs so they came back from war and there was no money no jobs and when you've got no money or no job it's quite hard you know to to sort of feed yourself to feed your family we're really lucky now because if we don't have a job our government looks after us but back then that didn't happen so there were lots of people who had no job their family was really poor um, and life was just pretty rubbish for, for lots of people but it, for, for German people in particular life was pretty pants for a long time after World War One. And then along came this guy. Now you probably recognise that picture um, as a man called Adolf Hitler. Now we think of Adolf Hitler as being a really, really bad guy, and he was. He did lots of terrible things. But I want you to pit, put yourself in the shoes of somebody who lived in a country where there were no jobs, no people, no you know, no money. It was hard to to feed yourself. And this guy comes along, and he said, "Germany's amazing." We're going to make Germany great. We are going to build roads. We are going to get loads of jobs for people. Everyone's going to have loads of money again. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to make Germany fantastic. Adolf Hitler loved the German people. And he was really quite cross because he had been a soldier in World War I. And so he felt just as rubbish as everybody else that Germany was really suffering. It was being really punished by everyone else in the world. It had no money and Adolf Hitler was really cross about this. So he decided he was going to take matters into his own hands. He was going to try and make Germany just as amazing as it had been before the war. So he came along and he gave speeches and he said, if you make me your leader, I will build roads. I will make sure everybody's got enough food. I will make you proud German people again. I will make sure we've got an amazing place to live with lots of space for all the wonderful German people. And he made lots of people feel really good. He made them believe in themselves. Now, that's quite a strange thing because we think of Adolf Hitler and we think he was an evil, bad man. And, and yes, that is true. But at the time, the German people actually thought he was really great. He, they all thought, you know, they thought he was gonna solve all of their problems. So after a few years, in 1933, Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany. Adolf Hitler had a special group of people who were in government. So in this country, we have the Labour Party, and the, uh, and the Tory party or the Conservative party. And we also have other political groups like uh, the Green Party, for example. In Germany, they also have different political parties, but Adolf Hitler was um, in charge of a political party. It's got, we call them the Nazi party now, but they had a really long name and I'm gonna write it in German on the screen. So, Adolf Hitler, are you ready? It's a really long word. Adolf Hitler was the leader of the National Sozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterspartei. Now that means the uh, National Socialist German Workers Party. It's quite a long name, not very catchy. So, they believed that the German people were the best. We call that nationalism, when a person or a group of people believes that they are the best. And they think, you know, the, the, the Nazis thought that actually other countries weren't quite as good as Germany. Um, and they were quite unkind to a lot of groups of people. So they thought Germany was the best. And they thought that Germany deserved to have amazing land and to be just as good as it was before World War One. So, Hitler makes all these great promises. He gets into power and straight away, he starts to become quite bossy. 
Now, remember, in the Treaty of Versailles, Hitler wasn't allowed to have an army. Germany wasn't allowed to have an army. Hitler broke that rule. He started to build up an army, just like Germany had before World War I. Now, another thing that Germany was not supposed to do was have extra land. Remember, after World War I, they had to give a lot of their land away to other countries. So, Hitler took his newly formed army that he wasn't supposed to have and marched into lots of other places. So, he marched into Czechoslovakia and he also marched into Austria. Now, to be honest, Austria didn't really fight back too much. Austria and Germany were great friends, so it wasn't too much of a hassle. But remember, he wasn't supposed to be doing this. He wasn't supposed to even have an army. So when he told his soldiers, you've got to march into Czechoslovakia and you've got to march into Austria, he was really breaking the rules. To start with, England, Br Great Britain, France, you know, they kind of ignored him a little bit because they didn't want to pick a fight with him because they could tell that he was trouble. But in September 1939, he did something that really irritated Great Britain. Hitler marched his troops or told all of his soldiers to go and invade Poland. Here is Poland. It is next door to Germany. Now, Poland and Great Britain were really good friends. And when Great Britain saw their good friend getting picked on by the Germans, they got really annoyed. So they basically said, you need to get out. You need to get out of Poland, Germany. And if you don't get out of Poland, we're going to come and fight you. The British Prime Minister at the time was this guy called Neville Chamberlain. And he gave a very important speech. And this is what he said. Unfortunately, Germany had absolutely no intention of withdrawing their troops from Poland. So, Britain did what they said they were going to do and declared war on Germany. And that is how World War II began. On one side in World War II, you had Japan, who was led by this guy. And you also had Italy who was led by this guy and you had Germany who was led by this guy. So that was one group of countries who were friends. This group of countries was called the Axis powers. On the other side you had these countries, you had Great Britain who was led by this guy to start off with. But very soon after, Great Britain was led by this guy. So you had Great Britain and France and the USA and Canada. Now, what about Russia? Russia, to start off with, was really good friends with Germany. Because Hitler said, oh Russia, I won't invade your country. I promise. I'll leave you all on your own. I won't do anything bad to hurt you. But as we know, Hitler wasn't very good at keeping his promises. And Hitler got a bit greedy. 
and he sent his soldiers into Russia. And the Russian leader, this guy, got a little bit annoyed and said, actually, Hitler, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. Okay, so we're going to rewind. This guy got shot in 1914. Everybody got cross when this guy got shot. And when this guy sh got shot, everyone started fighting. And World War I happened. World War I carried on for four years. And lots of people died. When World War I ended, they had no jobs. They had no soldiers. They weren't allowed to have an army. Life was terrible for the German people and everyone was sad and nobody had any jobs. Then this guy comes along and says, I'm going to make Germany great again. You'll all have jobs. You'll all have loads of money. Believe in me, follow me, I'm the best. And everybody thought he was great. But then he got a bit greedy. He had an army when he shouldn't and he started to take back the land that he had been forced to give away. Naughty man. Britain stayed out of the war until Germany did something that took the mickey. And Great Britain said, you can't do that. Poland are our friends. And so they stuck up for their friends. And that's when it all started. <laughs> 